Hello, what's up guys? Yeah, usually we do, uh, what, Monday? But uh, I'm bored. I figured some of you guys would be bored. Maybe we can talk watches. I still haven't fully um, set up. Uh, I'm hoping to do the live stream, a couple of live streams, you know, during all this time where everyone's stuck at home, you know, with um, maybe one or a couple of my Patreons, which looks like a few of you guys are chiming in, so. So yeah, let's just play with some watches. We can talk about watches. Yeah, everyone's cranking out content right now, which is nice. It's kind of saving everybody. So, I don't know what today is, 26th. So maybe I'll fire up a few watches here, get them running. Any new watch releases that I'm aware of? Um, yeah, I think a lot of places probably have new watches um, scheduled for release and everything, but uh, everything's going to be a little bit slower. So, What was that question? Am I going to get the new Seiko Frost Tuna? No. I, I Actually, there's really no Seiko out right now that I have intention of buying. That's pretty close. I don't know about you guys, but I usually set my watches just pretty close. So there's the Manta. And I know um, I've had a few requests to do a video, and I will do the um, Ward video soon. And uh, I know people want me to compare the Ward and the Manta. Yes, I do have, whoever that was, I asked that. Terry, yes, I do have that red dial of Vostok. Yeah, you guys checking in from Oakland County, Michigan. You, uh, that's like our hardest hit... Uh, County in Michigan for sure. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I've been looking at the Christopher Wards hard. They have some really good models and they're doing a 15% off sale right now. Oh, Wayne County's the hardest hit one. Go ahead and get this thing set. Grand Rapids. I haven't been down to Grand Rapids in a while. Yes, I live in northern Michigan. So, 45 to 2, around there. Something like that. Why don't I keep my watches on a winder? Um, well, I have one wolf winder. Uh, for one, I don't feel like investing in winders, and I honestly, I mean, I, I guess I have quite a few automatics, but it's not a big deal to let them die and then just fire them up. I actually enjoy kind of winding them and wearing them and setting them and stuff like that. It's it's not a big deal. The bezel action on this ward is phenomenal. Let's see... Yeah, Big Dog's wearing his Christopher Ward right now. Killer watch. Like, almost tempted to buy another one, but I, I don't want two of the same watch right now. The Manta bezel action is much snappier, and it's a 60 click, but there's zero play. I mean, it is a very good bezel action. And I'm wearing the Doxa right now. The Doxa Sub 200 in the Diving Star. So... Yeah, Terry, you got that yellow. Yeah, that that's probably my favorite Vostok right now. Um, whatever color you choose, whether it's the red or the yellow or whatever. I think they're all really good looking. Now I'm going to do the Zin 104. In this one, I was looking at 
Yeah, the uh, Christopher Ward is still more affordable than the Zinn. So, like, if you're going for uh, affordability, the uh, Christopher Ward is going to be the better um, or more affordable purchase. But the uh, Zinn is awesome. And for the Zinn bracelet, yeah, I am actually warming up to the uh, Doxa. I've been wearing it for, like, what, two or three days straight? I sized the bracelet and tossed it on wrist, and I've been wearing it. Um, the case is just... Definitely unique. It's different than, I thought it was going to be more of like the vintage Omega with the lie lugs or twist lugs. And it's definitely their own little um, twist on that type of case. So it's it's fun. So, so for this Zen, I, I'm going to buy the H-Link bracelet at some point. But before I even do that, um, I thought about buying a uh, Stabe, Stabe, Stabe mesh bracelet with the regular fold over clasp and it's tapered so i'm going to check with um mark over at long island watch on that so somebody asked i'm, I'm trying to i'm going to try to keep up guys but i'm sorry uh mr ralph asked uh, have i have i ever seen or heard of reactor watches so i actually owned a reactor never dark i forget what the model was called but it was actually a very heavy-duty built um, watch, and it has it, probably still to this day the brightest loom for the applied loom, and then it also had the tritium tubes in it. So it was actually a really cool watch. Um, I'm sure I paid way too much for it and sold it for way too little, but because um, they just they're not going to hold their value. But if you can score a really good deal on a used one, they're pretty pretty tough watches. They're pretty awesome. I don't know why that date change doesn't line up very good like that and then it snaps in this today 26th yeah it's Thursday and it is almost nine o'clock now this, I'm not going to go super long with this live stream, but I figured we'd just hang out for a bit and talk. So, eh, right in there somewhere. Kevin's checking in from New York City. Hopefully you're not uh, getting affected by it. I know New York is just slammed. Gold rotor. Yes, it has a gold-toned rotor. I'm not sure what it's made out of, but... And I do like wearing it on this strap, and I will wear it um, again very soon. I'm kind of getting my um, I'm getting my main collection kind of tightened up a bit. I think I, I feel pretty good about it. Let's see if we can get the borealis going too. I've been doing a lot of talking to my patrons and a lot of other people, both in Instagram. And um, no, the, the, so the strap is actually, it is pretty thick on it, but the way they constructed it, it contours and fits really good. So it doesn't feel, uh, it doesn't feel like it, like it's uh, uncomfortable or anything like that. It feels really good. So, and uh, so my Patreon group is uh, the founders, the 50 members that I'm going to do is almost full. And then I have another slot available for um, unlimited people at like $5 a month. And then it gets you access into a Discord chat. And then we talk in Discord. I know we're having a lot of fun over there. so And it's still kind of a tight-knit group so far. Somebody asked what Doxa this is. This is the Doxa Sub 200, fairly new release. I think they've been out a little while, but there's a few different colorways. This is the Diving Star, the yellow dial one. And uh, I still need to do the video on it, but I did show it in the live, the last live stream I did. So, uh, really nice beads of rice bracelet. That's very Doxa-like. It reminds me very much of the uh, Sub 1200 that I had. Um, but that's about it. That's about it as far as being doxa like the bezel is not as nice as on the 1200s and all those the sub 300s all those 
and um, yeah, I don't know. So I'll do a full video on this, but it's definitely a nice watch and I'm wearing it. It's a nice watch. I can appreciate what it is, but I I wish it wouldn't have cost $1,000, but it did, so whatever. I have it and I'm wearing it, whatever. Sometimes you just got to go for it, so. Yeah, Beads of Rice is really good. I really do like mesh bracelets too, though. And you guys are wearing some cool watches. I'm kind of seeing some of them, so. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Hilux Tacoma. I don't think I will sell it. I, I Like I said earlier, I am kind of fine-tuning the watches that I have, like, in my keeper box. And I'm feeling pretty good about it. I might move because I have some other ideas for some, some really good micro brands that I want to make a connect with. So there's a potential that I might move out of my main wear keeper box, I might move out like the SKX might actually go in my overflow box and that'll move, um, that'll make a, a vacant slot so I can do another micro brand in there. Um, and then the only two G-Shocks that will remain in the keeper box are my um, Camel Titanium. So that'll stay in the regular everyday box and whatever flop over and then uh, also the gold bling master will stay in the main box so yeah the camo one is sweet i don't wear it as much as i mean that but that's part of the problem with having more than say three to five watches is you're going to run into an issue where you end up um just not wearing some for a little while to the point where you kind of feel bad about it or something and then you'll at least for me, I'll pop it on wrist and I'll wear, you know, at least three or four days straight. At least three days. It seems like three days is what I typically will do if I jump on a switch and watches. I'll usually wear that watch for three days is pretty much what I do. And I know there's some people that can do um, a, a regular cycle where they'll just wear certain watches. Like I know my buddy Mike... He wears, you know, one of his frogmen every Friday. He's committed to that. So it's Frog Friday, you know. Um, you know, or I could do... I could do, like, you know, Monster Mondays or Manta Mondays. You know, you can tie it in with a day or something like that and, and play around with it that way. That would be a fun way to do it. Let's see if we can get this thing going. Yeah, so they released another sized Oris Aquas. I'll probably see that one eventually because I've been talking to Richard over at Saltzman's. So. Let's see. I have not wore this watch in a while either. I'll probably do some more hiking out in my area here soon, so maybe I'll wear it then. I don't have a knife on me right now. Somebody's asking for a pocket knife check, and uh, I'm like, I'm kind of quarantined at home, man. I'm not carrying around a knife. <laughs> you can rock if, uh Be Kinder Design says you can wear your Invicta every February 30th. Nice. Um, so yeah, I just sent over, I was carrying my orange Benchmade uh, mini bug out, um, quite often actually, and I just sent that over to my buddy Dirk for a, um, so he can do a video of it. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the monster on wrist for a little bit. But I usually always have a knife within hand's reach, I don't know if that counts, but, um, this is a, um, Steelcraft. I still haven't done a video on it or anything like that, but this watch was a gift from my buddy Dirk. Um, killer watch, or watch, killer knife, titanium. Um, I don't remember what steel this is, but it has the IKBS system, the ball bearing system, and it's a flipper. I absolutely love flippers. This is a little bit too big for like what I would carry, uh, but awesome knife. Somebody asked if I ever miss the uh, Rolex Oyster Perpetual 39 white dial I had. No, I don't. 
I most always have knives within reach. Here's an old Benchmade that I have. I really like this size or smaller, and I like them really light, so polymer handles or titanium. Um, and like I said, I prefer flippers. This one's not, um, but this one's gotten a lot of use too, so. Yeah, I mean, some people could say the, the Oyster Perpetual 39 would be boring, but it's it's definitely timeless. Like, it's it's... It's definitely a watch that somebody could just buy, wear that one, and just always have it, so. Yeah, the Spyderco, my buddy Doug gave me a few. The yellow one's my favorite. Actually, I could, well, see, that's the other thing. Dirk has me thinking um, I should be kind of tying my EDCs together. I see people like um, Mark at the Average Bros, he ties his EDCs together, too. So I might actually slowly start doing that, you know, carrying my orange knife with my orange watch or my yellow knife with my yellow watch. I just need, um, I, I'm going to have to see if there's any white dot or white knife. Man, it seems like it would get dirty really bad. I don't know. I'm open for suggestions. So, but yeah, I really like these. I need to clean it up, but I like these, uh, Dragonflies by Spider Co. These are cool. My buddy Doug hooked me up with these. No, I'm not going to match my socks to. I wear smart wool socks 100% of the time. White knives get dirty quick. Yeah, they do, but I got two white dialed watches. I'm going to need a white handled knife. I got to start doing some research. A white Spider Co. Delica 4. That actually sounds perfect because I don't know if they care. I don't know if they make a. Um, white dragonfly. I really like these dragonflies, but I would do the, um, or I need to find a different, uh, brand. Maybe mix it up a little bit too. I don't know if there's other, I'll, I'll have to see what there is. I have a lot of Kershaw. I know they're, they're cheap, but that's kind of like my thing, right? So, um, Ben, yes, I am, I am going a hundred percent. I am going to buy the H link bracelet for the Zen, but I think it's like $300. Um, and I don't have a problem with that, but, oh, Benchmade makes a, a white bug out. Yeah. Oh, wait, they make the white mini bug out. Yeah, I'm going to get that because then it's a black blade. I'm going to do that. Thanks. That's what I'm going to do. The white Benchmade mini bug out. I think my buddy, um, Billy Bob, I think he has it. I think he has one of those. So I don't think he'll sell it, but I'll just go on, um, what's the one out in... What's the big Blade HQ? I'll probably go to Blade HQ and order one up. So I forgot. Oh, the H Link bracelet for the Zen. I'm 100% going to buy that. I, I will soon. But I, I might try the, the mesh bracelet first because everyone is going to throw the H Link on this. I kind of want to do something a little bit different. And I don't have a high end mesh. So. Let's see, what else do I have to play with? I was carrying a CRKT earlier. A 21.5 millimeter watch bracelet. Yikes. Um, so I've done in the past, I don't know if I want to try it again, but I bought a 22 millimeter Hey, Billy Bob, I was just talking about you and your white. I think you have a white Benchmade mini bug out. Um, I've bought a 22 millimeter bracelet, and then I removed some material to get it to fit into there, depending on what watch you're trying to do that 21 and a half millimeter on. But you could do a 22 and then take off a half a millimeter on each side, and boom, you're all set. It really is not that difficult. Um, you just have to do a little bit at a time and keep checking it but it's totally doable. Probably a lot easier to do that than it is to find a 21 and a half millimeter bracelet. Yeah, send that to him because I just sent him, um, I just sent him my orange one. He, I think he even got it today. But I was just saying, because now I'm thinking about matching, uh, I'm talking to Billy Bob, I know the rest of you guys, um, you've already heard this, but um, I'm thinking about matching a few knives to a few of my watches. So like if I do the, the yellow with the Doxa, then if I get that white 
mini bug out, I could wear it with the Borealis or the Christopher Ward. So, yeah, that's how you have fun with this hobby is you get creative like that. You know, you look for different bracelets, even if you got a mod one or or straps or whatever like that. Th those are all some of the affordable accessory things. You don't necessarily need to jump out and buy a watch every time. Even if you have money, like you've, you've accumulated some money and there's enough there to buy a watch, maybe don't buy a watch. Maybe buy some stuff for the watches you already have. A new watch box or some better tools or a mat or something to work on them so you don't scratch them or you know try to get yourself a, a place in your house where you can actually have this stuff like a designated place just to have the, you know your hobby so I know that seems weird that might seem like a waste of money because you could have used that money to buy a watch but you'll probably be able to enjoy the hobby even more if you do that stuff as well my good friend Terry's checking in from Miami. Anyway, that's my little rant on adding to the hobby. Yeah, Zen watches are great. Um, if you're buying, I think the iconic Zins or any of the Zins really, the Damascos are really good. But if you buy a Zen 104 or a Zen 556, it's almost like a zero loss proposition. You're going to be able to you're going to be able to buy it, try it, wear it. And, and if you do sell it on the used market, you're not going to lose very much. And quite frankly, I, I've, I've had a few of these Zen 104s and I always come back to it. Always come back to it. And Cowboy Swami is kind of the same way, you know, he's saying about the U1 and the U2. Guys that end up falling in love with those, they might buy and sell it a couple of times, but they always go back to it. Uh, let's see, ever had a Aragon watch? No, I have not. The I'll tell you right now, today, and every day is different, but today I was looking at, well, I'm still waiting to hear back from the guys over at Notice. They are putting together a Notice retrospect for me, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably buy that here soon. Um, the, the other watch that I was actually kind of looking at was the Aster and Banks, uh, what is that one called? I think my computer locked out on me. Uh, the C, I think it's the C Ranger or something. Um, but they're on sale right now for like six eighty, and I think they were like eight hundred or something like that. Yeah, the guys over at Notice are they're good guys. They're definitely, um, yeah, the C Ranger. Oh, you have the DLC black. That that one looks really good. So I was looking at that one. But really, I think I'm going to go with the blue colored one with the orange seconds hand. So somebody's asking me if I, how do I like the Manta? Um, I finally settled. Now, I, again, with the Mantas, I've had a couple of them. And I think I've settled. Like, this is the Manta for me. So um, yeah, once, so... Cowboy Swami, I mean, once you get involved with the, um, you know, the custom steel and everything like that, there's uh, definitely some pros to going with that way. Um, I personally like a little bit of shine, and you're, I don't think you're just, you're not going to get that with the treated steels and stuff like that. They're going to have a more of a gray tone to them, um, which definitely looks cool in its own way, but I like the uh, more jewelry looking stuff instead of the full on tool watch. So it's worth it to a lot of people that are needing it or actually just really like that, you know, second kind of cool type thing, then sure, go ahead and go for it. But for me, I like, I mean, you guys look at the watches that I have here. It's, there's no one exact thing that would um, describe like what I go for in a watch. I pretty much buy what I gravitate toward and then if it sticks it sticks if it doesn't it doesn't so but yeah the Manta's great I haven't been wearing it a ton oh wow I need to it's a little loose on my wrist so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it in a little bit or all the way snap it in on the fly adjustment good to go nice taper to that bracelet the bracelet is phenomenal this is a total package Manta's a total package um, they charge for it though. 
they are pricey for, you know, to a lot of people. So, yeah, I like a little shine. I like a little bling, you know, but then, um, you know, I can go with a bold yellow and say, really, like, look at me, look at me. You know, the white dial ones kind of stand out. You know, when you're, when someone's wearing a white dial watch, I think it, it definitely stands out on wrist, probably more than this would. This is probably a little under the radar. But the white dialed ones, I don't know about you guys, I I do a lot of um, spotting. Like when I see, when I'm out and about, I, I kind of pay attention to what is on people's wrist. Loomshot says, uh, taking a break from answering emails, I picked up a new watch and I can't wait. Yeah, I know it uh, can get overwhelming sometimes, but hopefully you can get back at it. Yeah, the, the white dial just pops on wrist. So, Kevin, legit, the white dialed Omega Seamaster was 100% the watch that I was like, I was going to gun for. That was the one I was going to go for because it just looks amazing. And I still think it looks so much better than this Ward. But... I pretty much did what a lot of us do where I talked myself into um, where I tell people don't substitute another watch for, you know, the watch that you think you really want. I 100% did that with this watch, but it's so much watch for the money. So like, and I have to say, ever since I've done this, I legit have not been thinking about that Omega Seamaster. I have looked at a bunch of pictures of it and I still think it's amazing but it's just way more money than I want to spend this thing is right there in the sweet spot I think I paid I forget what I paid like 760 it was under 800 whatever it was and uh it's phenomenal like I don't think in close to the thousand dollar range you know and I put I'm obviously under that I don't think you can get more money than this so or more watch for the money for this Compare the Zen 104. Now the the Ward's it's a bigger watch for sure. So you can see there. I'm trying to holding holding them at about the same plane, but you can see the Ward definitely has larger dimensions overall. Um, you know, case width, the lug to lug, the thickness, everything. It's going to be a bigger watch. The Zen 104 is a hundred percent a sweet spot watch for almost everybody, and this blue dial one is just amazing like I, I i wish i kind of wish i mean i'm glad that this one's a limited edition because i like that but and i'm sure they'll do more they'll do different variants or something i think every year zen is going to probably do some sort of limited edition um i don't know that there's uh oh wait there is a new g-shock that i do want to get as soon as it comes available and i'm gonna already forget the number but it's like a a GBX-100, so I'll probably uh, get that one, or a couple of them, because they're pretty cheap, too. My opinion on the Seiko SBDC-051, man, I can't remember which one that is. Yes, Kevin, that new Seiko White Dial Samurai looks sweet, and I don't, I'm not going to buy one, but if it gets like a USA release and Mimo brings it in, then I'll definitely see if he can send that to me. What's my favorite G-Shock? That's easy. This one right here. The Gold Bling Master. Chris is asking, should I go for the Manta Atlas or the Chris Ward GMT and the Seiko MM200? Hmm. Well, if you really, really, really feel like you want the GMT... Oh man, that's a, that's a tough one. Well, I'm pretty sure the, I think the Christopher Ward GMT is going to be, I would, no offense to Manta, but I'm all about that crazy value. I think I would go for the Ward and the uh, Marine Master 200. I, I would probably do that. Uh, release date on the Alpinist, I don't know that one on that yet, so. Um... So this, 
Well, it's the fr so the SBDC 051, that's the first larger size 62 MAS release. I'm not a big fan of that one. The new one, the new one is a smaller case, and I actually do like that one. That one's closer to the SLA whatever release, crazy expensive one. Yeah, Craig, the Christopher Ward white GMT. And they just came out with a new GMT. I don't know if you guys saw that. They just dropped that today. Pretty cool looking. Loom shot. I would just build a high-end mod, but that's just me. Um, if if the if you can get a high-end mod or a mid-range mod done for about what a Marine Master 200 would cost, I would actually consider that. I would do the um, no Crown Guard uh, SKX case, and then just do a, a turtle drop-in or something. You could probably do that pretty cheap. I uh, can't believe I sold the Titanium Citizen. Well, it, it wasn't really mine, so I was selling it for other people. Uh, JLC Polaris versus Rolex Explorer. Way outside my knowledge. But I would go with the Explorer. Uh, let's see. I like the word a lot. I also sent you a list to check out. Okay, Jack, I'll check that out. Uh, using OEM Remaster 300 dial in hands is what I'm thinking. You know what? I don't know if you're going to... I don't know how backlogged you are, Mr. Loom Shot. I have your card right here, actually, too. I know he's not answering emails right now, but there's his email if you guys want to get a hold of him and have a, a crazy mod built right there. That's who you get a hold of. Not me. Don't ask me. Ask Eric. Which I might actually have Eric build me a watch, guys. So. No, I just got her. Yeah, so don't email, don't email him right now. He's trying to catch up. Don't email Eric right now. He's way too busy. Send him a message on Instagram. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. Good luck keeping up. You might have to drop out of school and just go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, you might just have to drop out of school and just do watches full time. So I probably won't email you for a little while then. Or maybe I'll just talk to you through live streams. I'm still trying to build. I know you already did your Namoki build, but I'm still trying to build uh, my Namoki build. I, I broke the crystal press on this one, and uh, I, do, I have my new crystal press in, but I need to finish these up. Good place to buy Christopher Ward's under MSRP. ChristopherWard.com. They have 15% off right now. That's below MSRP, and that's right from the AD. There you go. Um, Ed asks, hey, Rob, what are my thoughts on the Hamilton Khaki King? Insane killer watch. It's an awesome watch. So I've ha I've had a bunch of the black dial ones. I don't know that I've had the, the like champagne colored dial one. I kind of want to see that one. I but maybe I already have. I can't remember. Um, yeah, the, the all, pretty much all the Hamiltons are just killer watches. You just have to make sure you get them below retail because if you ever think you're going to sell them, then you're going to take a bath on them. Brendan asks, is there any updates on the Borealis Estrell? Um, they're, I'm sure they're, they're going to be in the same boat as everybody else as far as um, with delays and everything like that. But I will talk to Carlos. Again, soon, he's one of the owners of Borealis um, because I I want to hopefully put out a exclusive, like, 50-watch 50, 50 a Estrell a drop of my design with him. So I'll be talking to him soon. So Ben asked my thoughts on the Oak and Oscar. Um, I looked at him today, actually, because he was doing a live stream with Justin from Manta. And they look like really good watches, but uh, more than I want to spend. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and I even toyed today again. I toyed with the uh, titanium. Um, um, uh, Oris Aquas. But it's like 1800 bucks, and I just don't want to spend that much on a watch. 
um, somebody asked if the if this guy is ho hollow or solid. So it has like a honeycomb. It's it's hollow-ish. I mean, it's they have to do like a grid inside. So it's it has material inside just for structural integrity, but it's not it's not solid. That would be an insane amount of material. It would weigh too much. But um, I know Bruce said he dropped or his daughter dropped the the mini one here and broke off some the toes and the claws. So, thoughts on the Seiko Marine Master 300 green version LE. I think that's the Zimbi. That's the one you're talking about. I know the Zimbi made one like that. And my buddy uh, Steve over at JTM Watches actually has one in stock for a pretty good deal. I think it's a killer looking watch. And probably not going to go down in value too much either. Uh, Saul asked, what's my take on the Citizen Solar Titanium Mount Bell? Still a fan? Yes. I don't have that watch anymore, but that is a really cool watch. Ed is looking at the Champagne Dial Khaki King for around 340 on Joma. That's, that's a pretty sweet watch. I think you'd like that. Depending on what your wrist size is, sometimes I felt like it was a little too small on me, but my wrist was a little bit smaller now, so I, I don't, I think it would work fine. And that's a, that's a good deal. That's a good price on that. Thoughts on the Yama Superman? Um, they reached out to me. They were supposed to send me a watch, and they just kind of dropped off. I get that a lot with some of these micro brands. They'll reach out to me, and I'll talk to them, and we'll set a deal up, and they're going to send in something, and then they just drop right off. So uh, let's see. Brown Man Pasta asked my thoughts on the new Invicta 1953 Diver. I did watch... Mark's video today that he put up on that and I have to say that watch looks very meh like it, it just looks too like I'm not interested it looks boring uh, let's see Ronan asked if I've checked out the Christopher Ward C60 Elite 1000 I never did get a chance to see it you know you go to a thousand meter water resistance on a watch and yeah it's going to be a beefier watch it's going to be thicker but I think I'm not sure if that one's stainless. I know they made a titanium one as well because Bruce, I think, got it in for a video. Um, but that might change things a little bit. I think I don't like the watches being too thick. Like this Christopher Ward here is, I don't, I wouldn't want to go any bigger than this one. Um, both in the case size or the thickness or anything like that. Because it's a 42 mil and thickness, I mean, it's, 13 and three quarter thick. So, and I'm sure it's a 50 lug to lug here. Almost like 40, 49.2. So it's pretty thick, but it, I mean, it wears good on wrist, but I'm, there's no way I'm going any thicker than this. So you start getting watches that are like 14 mil thick, no thanks. Uh, you know, this is just under the 14 mark. I'm okay there, but I'm not going, yeah. That other one being 15, I mean, that's pretty much a deal breaker for me. That's pretty much like a lot of those Omegas same thing, like the Planet Oceans and everything like that. They just get too thick. Yeah, yeah, that Invicta is very much like the Black Bay, kind of without the... Uh, let's see, what do I think about the Doxa Sub 200 now that I've worn it for a bit? I have the blue and I really love it. Um, so, yeah, it pretty much grew on me. I didn't think it would. I was actually kind of disappointed when I first got it um, just because there are some downfalls to it and I'll talk about it in a full video when I do it but the more I wore it the more I was just like this is just a good clean watch I still don't see it really worth paying $990 so basically $1,000 it just doesn't seem like it's a $1,000 watch um, but I don't set the prices so how and how can I say it's not a $1,000 watch when I see people posting up pictures of them all the time and I bought one, so apparently it is a $1,000 watch because we all did it. So, yeah, at six fifty, dollars it would have been a no-brainer. Um, but again, I just paid $990 for it, so would six fifty dollars be too low? I don't know. And they only make, they don't make a ton of them. So say they make, so they have like what the, uh, oh, I forget all the names of them, but the professional, the Caribbean, the 
Diving Star, whatever all the names are, all the different colors. So if they only make, I don't know, a hundred of each or a couple hundred of each, I don't even know how many they made of each, then if they sell three quarter of them right out of the gate for a thousand, I don't know if they sold, they probably didn't sell that good. It wouldn't be surprised. I don't know if Doxa does sales. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they maybe do lower the price to, to move the rest of them. I don't know how they work. So I'm pretty sure Doxa doesn't even know how they work, to be honest with you. And I'm going to talk about that in a video because, no, my Doxa is not for sale. I'm keeping my Doxa. Quite frankly, I'm considering maybe even getting a sub-1200 again or whatever like I had in the past. But I'm just toying with the idea. I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, yeah, so on the used market, they're already dropping, you know, a couple hundred bucks potentially. So the Christopher Ward discount code, ah, I forget. I can't remember what it is. Does anybody know what the Christopher Ward, tr yeah, it's Trident 15. That is what it is. Thanks, Casper. It is Trident 15. So I'm not sure if it works on all of them, but it definitely works on the Trident modeled ones. Yeah. I, I was looking at the Christopher Ward site again today, looking through there and trying to determine if um, uh, if there was one that I just couldn't live without. So Mr. Ralph wants to know, how does he shave a half a millimeter off the bracelet end link? Well, you do a quarter millimeter on each side. And you use, I don't know if I have one here, hold on. I don't, I don't have it in arm's reach. So to do the, let me see if I can find a bracelet though. Hold on. Work with me guys here. Hold on. All right. So this is a good, I like this hex bracelet because it tapers for one. So what you would do, this would actually, I don't know what watch this would look good on, but this is a, this is a 20. So this is, I mean, but it's just going to be an example. Well, no, this is 22. So I could actually do this, but I don't have a watch that's 20 that I'm going to put this on. So you want to measure it and you want to make sure, you, so you measure here and you measure your watch. And then you're going to work with just the end link. Now you can measure it with a mic and mark it with a marker. So you know that you're, because you're, you're only going to do a half a millimeter. So you're going to take the 22 and you're going to turn it into 21 and a half. So you have to take off a quarter millimeter off each side. That's not a lot of material. And you want to do it flat. So what I have is you can use a very fine, like a uh, grinding stone, uh, like a machinist stone. Like you'll, you could find them in a, like a knife sharpening aisle or something. Um, that would probably be the easiest way to keep it flat because you want to keep it flat so you have a nice consistent and then you just kind of shave off a little bit at a time like a wet stone and just it's going to take you a while but you just do it nice and slow and you work it back and forth and you do a little bit on each side and then you keep checking it hopefully you try to stay as consistent as possible on side to side until you get down to 21 and a half and then you probably will still be able to use the 22 millimeter spring bar there's enough play in the compression of it that you're still going to be able to utilize that. To do a half a millimeter, I mean a quarter millimeter on each side is not going to be that difficult. So pick out a bracelet, figure out which one you want to go with, and just go for it. You know, most of these bracelets are like $100. It's going to be a pretty small investment, and it's you're not going to find... I mean, Strap Code actually might make... I think they do make a 21 and a half millimeter end link I don't remember what it's for. I think it's for a certain generation of tuna. I think they have um, a 21 and a half millimeter lug width. Check strap code for that. I'm pretty sure I remember seeing that. So you could do it with the strap codes. You could do it with... Now, don't get a bracelet like this. Well, this one's fitted for SKX, so you, you want a solid end link, first of all, to work with. Otherwise, you're going to be bumming, but shouldn't be that difficult. I think anybody could pretty much do it. 
any good bracelet options for the matte black SKX case? Um, oh man, I don't know. This one's pretty much matte black. Again, this is the Miltat, um, but this is the straight bars. I don't know if they have any out there that are, uh, let's see. I don't know if they have any that are, um, yeah, I think that would look, that would look pretty good. There's a little bit of more shine to it, but I think it would be okay. I mean, they're different coating procedures, you know, whether it's uh, ion plated or um, I forget all the different platings that you use. So, yeah, getting the, sometimes getting a black bracelet to go with a black case can be tough. I would say, yeah, Dirk's having a hard time with it. Um, again, that's where some of these mesh bracelets kind of come in because like, you, there's almost like some forgiveness because it's mesh and it just pretty much goes with all watches. I would consider just throwing a mesh bracelet on it. There's some good black ones out there. I think Stabe even makes the mesh in the black. Uh, they're pricey. They're like a couple hundred bucks. Ride time's checking in. Hey. Yeah, I'm going to definitely do the mesh. I might even order that mesh tomorrow. Is the Zin... Is the Zin 104 Blue a keeper for you at the moment? My 104 white is never leaving. Yes, I I plan on keeping that for sure. Um, let's see. And yes, I will get the H-Link bracelet for that. I was talking about it earlier. I will get the H-Link bracelet for that. But I think I'm going to do a Stabe mesh bracelet first for it because I just want to try it and who knows that might last me a long time they're they're all you're always going to be able to get that h link bracelet so I'm not in a hurry to do that the uh, Tissot Gentleman is a very good looking watch and a very good deal on it right time yeah the uh, coronavirus definitely sucks and we'll get past it we'll get through it and on the back side I'm telling you guys um, there's, there's still going to be some bummer points to having to go through this, even though we get through it and we get past it, but you're going to see watch inventory of the watches that we all kind of really go after, like the regular stuff. You're going to see inventories depleted. And I think there was a couple of, uh, videos I watched recently, like the NTH subs and stuff like that. You're going to see those dwindle down to nothing. It's going to take them a while to catch back up. Um, you know, there's, there's other brands out there that you're going to see inventory depleted for sure. And then I don't know what that's going to do for watches on the secondary market. Like right now, if you can afford it, like if you're totally stable, then now is probably a really good time to buy because the people that aren't stable, I, I, you know, it's, it's really not like you're taking advantage of them. They have an asset that is worth cash and they need it. So that's one good thing about maybe having too many watches is you can sell them especially if you have watches that are actually sellable then you can sell them so you can then take care of real life stuff and you know the people that are okay and they have money they can help you out with that so it works for both parties and again those people that are selling them they'll recover too and they'll come back and they'll buy more watches yeah so and don't don't feel bad about it, but also be fair with people. Don't don't try to beat people up. Give them like, you know, whatever market value was before all this happened. It's going to be a little bit less than that. Just I think as long as the buyer and the seller are both happy with the transaction, you know, go for it. But like, don't don't try to take advantage of people. So yeah, if you're if you're good to go for buying right now, is a heck of a time to buy. And it's it's probably going to be like that for a little, well, for a little bit longer. And then I think we're going to kind of flip a little bit where I think we might, a few of us might be fighting for the same watch a little bit. So the price could potentially go up. Yeah, so, yeah, depending on what kind of watches you had, like I'm, I'm getting a lot of people trying to send me watches to sell and I'm just not feeling it. Like I don't want to do it. Like I... I mean, I would love to help people out, but 
I can only do so much and I'm not sure how well like my sale videos will sell so hey uh, let's see van asks hey rob how much would you pay the most for an oem 007 dial um if you're in the usa dude hit me up i can i think i maybe have one laying around and if i don't loom shot probably does like you might be able to get one for free or 20 bucks uh, let's see Yeah, folks. Yeah, a lot of people are holding on to money. Terry's right. A lot of a lot of people are holding on to money. Um, I still see people buying. It's I mean, it's still happening, and I definitely selling. I don't. It's it's definitely a, a more careful market. Do you be careful of what you get because of coronavirus? I don't know what that means, but. Uh, so the Canadian dollar has dropped, so we're not really buying anything. Yeah, that's... But if it's still Canadian dollars to dollars, then it's it's all relative, so... Uh, Hamilton is definitely not known for their dive watches. I'm not a huge fan of their dive watches. They have some higher-end ones that are probably okay, but they're priced too high, so... Hamilton's more of the field watch. I would stay there. Maybe even some dress watches. Um, I don't have any intentions of reviewing the Tissot gentleman. <laughs> Toilet paper for watches. Um, oh yeah, good point, Loomshot. I know they're saying like two days, 48 hours or something like that uh, for packages, leaving them off to the side. Um, yeah, I don't... I think I, I've... I haven't gotten anything yet, but I haven't really been receiving and sending a lot in packages right now. I'm kind of letting things slow down a little bit. So, but the time frame for the shipping process is where a lot of the lead time goes anyway. For the hopefully the virus dies then, but we haven't really had any issue up here yet. So, yeah. So Jim, you're letting the Amazon boxes. I haven't. I've been opening them up, so I'm like, I guess I'm a risk taker here. I think Kevin says he thinks the price will go down more once the financial institutions start collecting their money again. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't think watch prices are going to go down. I think you're going to see new watch inventory deplete, and then you're going to see secondary prices potentially stay the same or go up. The new Seiko Willard release, is that the newer affordable one? Those are pretty slick. I like those. Hamilton Spirit of Liberty. I haven't, I don't know if I've checked that one out yet. What is my favorite watch brand, Seiko or Casio? I would say Casio. Zen 104 versus 556. Um, I would pick the 104, but... I, I haven't played with a 556 five, in a while. Uh, Dirk, I'm 100% with you on that. I think if you're if you're faster than the the virus, you no, I don't want to joke about it. Uh, let's see. Any thoughts on the new Seiko Willard reissue in green and black? I think they look great. I'm excited to check one out. <laughs> Craig didn't let it. Yeah, see, I think a lot of us are too just... Well, part of it's habit too. Like, you forget. So... Let's see. Oh man, I'm getting behind here. Uh, yeah, Celine Driver, your favorite brand is Zellos. Nailed it. Zelloholic, that's kind of hard to say. The new Seiko Willard releases are awesome looking. I hope to see one as soon as I can. The Seiko's guys, I'm telling you, like, I mean, look what I have on the table here. I have my old Seiko Monster. I'm still in love with that, right? 
I have a Seiko SKX, which was a gift, and I, I still wear it occasionally, and I like to have it as a comparison to other watches. But I have no Seiko in my main box, other than those two, which the SKX is probably going to get bumped to the overflow, and the Orange Monster is going to own its spot in the top left. That's where it always sits. So there's no other Seiko in that box. And there's two Casio, so... Yeah, the, the King Turtles are a legit very good deal. Uh, I just did that video on it. Like, the, you can pick them up for like $400. That's basically what Turtles were before. So, and it's a lot better Turtle. It's a better bezel, you know, ceramic, sapphire, all that good stuff. And I actually kind of have grown to like the Day-Date uh, magnifier. Rav... New Carbon Gravity Master or MTG. I think I'm kind of over the big G-Shocks already. I think I did my run on the big G-Shocks, and I think I'm over it. But if I were to pick the two, I would go for the MTG. Do I like the Samurai? Yes, I do like the Samurais, and I do really want to see the white dial Samurai. Oh, wow, that new Willard's going to be over a 1000 Yeah, see, I'm out, man. If I'm going to pay that much, I'm going to get a ward. I, I, Eric, no, I, I don't have any modded SKXs right now. And trust me, with that, that grenade dial turtle in here, it seriously crossed my mind to build a mod with it. Um, plus, I have that SRPC-23, that anthracite dial, which was probably my favorite build I ever did and I end up selling that watch to Dirk and I know he enjoys it but I could see maybe building that one as well I'm not but I'm not going to because like I'm I'm really not playing with the Seikos too much right now you know the between the do it <laughs> I don't know maybe I will we'll see no Dirk you're not having it no more I, I'm not going to sell you any more watches any more build watches I know, right, Chris? That grenade, that green grenade dial in a SKX case, a black one, a black case would look really good, I know for sure. Um, but we'll see. Maybe I will. Thanks for stopping by, Terry. Uh, Be Kinder asked Orion Hellcat. Again, Nick at Orion was supposed to send me one, and then he just dropped off. So I'm not going to keep bugging him. I'm not going to keep saying, hey, Nick at Orion, are you going to send me one of those? My, You know, my viewers want to see it. So, um I can only ask a couple times and then I move on. I get that with a lot of brands, guys. Seriously. Uh, let's see. Thoughts on the Seiko 9F Quartz movement? It's finishing as close to the spring drive. If I were going to buy a Grand Seiko, I would 100% be most interested in the 9F Quartz ones. Is like that snowflake that I had in here was probably my my not probably is a hundred percent my favorite spring drive one, but I would do a nine F quartz for me personally. Do you um, Galaga asks? Do you think the King Turtles will come with a non? No, I think the I think the King Turtles was a little test. I'm not sure if they're going to keep doing them, but I think if you're going to see a sapphire crystal, you're going to see a cyclops. Yeah, Dirk, that seriously, maybe we should build that. We'll we'll talk. Let's talk, Dirk. I know I know you said you probably don't want to buy anything right now, but we might have to make that happen. And maybe it will work with Loomshot because I don't want to build it. <laughs> I'll let him build it. And what about another Doxa? Yeah, so I would do I think I would consider a um the twelve hundred again. I'm not sure what colorway I as weird as it is, I would maybe go, I don't know what it's called, but that like crazy sea foamy green looking one. I forget what they call that one. I think that one looks pretty dope. I could see maybe saving up for that, but I, I would have to talk to Doxa and see if they can uh, give me a little bit, a little better deal on it or something like that. Because I'm helping them out, right? I'm promoting them, so. Watch Aficionado asks, how long will the 4 or 36 movement run without needing service on average my father's is nine years old and still going very strong don't touch it if it's still running good don't touch it this one right here runs slow and actually I, I know i don't have a full wind on it and this one's what like six years old 
to 2014. Let me see if I can wind it up a little bit and I'll throw it on the time grapher right now. This one probably actually needs a service. But it, if it keeps, no, I'm, I'm not drinking any bourbon. I, I've had a, I had a beer with dinner and then I have a, a live stream beer. That's it. All right, let me throw this on the time grapher. Sorry if those beeps are loud. Let's see. I don't know, Roy. They're, I don't think they're too bad. Like, you can get those King Turtles for 400 bucks. I think that's totally fine. All right, so it definitely doesn't have a full wine. Ampl amplitude says 283. It should be closer to 300. Actually, this is posting up pretty good numbers. Um, beat error is 1.3. That's not good, but I see those beat errors on these Seikos are usually like that. They're off. Like, even brand new ones are off like that. The, anytime I throw a Seiko on the time grapher, I'll get crazy numbers. But it's running... It's running at a... It says a negative two seconds per day right now. Negative three now. This is actually running better than what I remember. I, th I thought before it was running at... Um, Man, I thought it was running at like negative 15 or something. Yeah, so like if your dad's Seiko is running at like what this one is. I mean, heck, even if he's within like, if he's if he's within the, the specs, right? If he's like 20 seconds fast or slow a day, leave it alone. Just keep running it. Because depending on the watchmaker, they might not be able to do much for it anyway. These the Seiko, yeah, the the, the Seiko movements are weird. Um, and just because I throw it on the time graph and it says negative three, like I might wear this for a couple of days and it might be running perfect. It's hard to say. Doug, I haven't checked the SRPC two three yet. I, I will check it though. But I can tell you the alignment's perfect, and I don't see any flaws in it. So it's it's a very good example. I would hate to tear that one apart. And it's... Well, you, what am I talking about, Doug? You sent me that watch. It's brand new. <laughs> I'm talking to you like you want to buy it. You sent the watch to me. Uh, you want me to throw the ward on there? I know I should probably show you guys this. This is the first time I've put the ward on. I have no idea what it's running at. And it does, it does, I know it doesn't have a full wind on it either. But see, instantly, when I put that on there, the, the Swiss movements on the time grapher is like almost comparing a V8, you know, muscle car on a dyno graph and a Honda Civic, like a Seiko, on the dyno graph. That's almost exactly what it's like. So the Christopher Ward has a zero beat error. It's clean. Amplitude is 303. And it's running at a plus, we got to let it settle in, but it started at a plus three, and now it's at a plus seven. We'll, we'll let it settle for a little bit. I bet you it settles at probably about a plus five. Oh, you want me to check the Doxa too? Yeah, see, it's already settling down. I bet the, the, the word's going to be dial up at plus five. All right, let's check the Doxa. These are super short checks, too. You, you should check them longer than this. Let me check the G-Shock. The G-Shock is dead on, always. So the, the Doxa has a, a ETA 2824 in it. And I've been wearing it for the last couple of, well, three days or whatever. Amplitude's kind of low on it, surprisingly. It says 255. Um, yes, Jim, I think the ones you're talking about are the GBX 100s or whatever like that. I think that's the one you're talking about. I do want to get one of those. I want to check those out on the G-Shocks. So the Doxa is running at a plus, plus three, plus four seconds, but the amplitude seems a little low. It's at 261. Yeah, so plus four on the Doxa. But that's what you're going to get with these Swiss movements. They're going to run really good.
Yeah, I probably should just do a... I should just do an episode of just Time Grapher. Just get a bunch of watches and just do Time Grapher for you guys. All right. Well, I'm going to wind things down, guys. I appreciate you chiming in. My beer is empty. <laughs> yeah, I could do a Time Grapher video. I'll probably have to turn the sound off and then just show you guys. Because then it... Because I don't adjust it either. I really, you're supposed to look up the movement and then adjust the um, lift angle on it. So that way you get a proper reading on it. I kind of just throw it on there and let it do the auto thing. It's, it's usually, it usually gives you a pretty good example of like what it's running at. So let's see. So I'll ask, should I keep my Citizen Pro Master Tough that I bought pre-owned for 100 bucks, or get the Citizen Solar Titanium Mount Bell for 700 that Mont Bell is pretty sweet. Um, is it worth the extra 600? Only you can answer that. They can tell you they hold their value, kind of. Uh, Dane, be careful with the time grapher. It's a fun toy to have, but sometimes ignorance is bliss. And yes, that GBX 100, I will get one or three of those in and we'll definitely check them out. Yeah, the time graphers with the, so many automatics, it's just nice. Yes, ignorance is bliss, but sometimes it's nice to know, like, if you think you're having an issue with the watch, you can toss it on there, and then you know for sure. So, <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for chiming in. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Let me uh, turn the lights off, though, so we can get a little bit of glow going here. So, obviously, we got the monster, the 3D print monster showing off, but we have some cool... We have some cool loom on the table. Though, seriously, one of the most impressive ones I have, though, is that new ward is very impressive. Like, I mean, like, almost like Seiko loom impressive. It's it's really good. I, it, it's hard to beat ward right now for value. All right, guys. I'll catch you on the next one.